Okay, my name is Rob Wolford. <laughs> I'm portraying a blacksmith at North River Mills. Uh, here we are today heating up a piece of roll stock, um, getting it up to temperature, getting it up to a heat. I'm using a combination of charcoal and coal at this time. I started with charcoal to quickly get the fire going without putting out a lot of uh, sulfurous uh, smoke. And if you watch the fire, you'll see behind where I have uh, added a little coal, yellow smoke is wisping off. That's your sulfur, manganese, and whatever other impurities in the carbon are burning off. Trying to get it up to a uh, dream sickle orange. That'll be about 1700 degrees. You learned from uh, uncles or your grandfather? Interestingly, I learned in the Army under a Chief Clagg, who was nuts about uh, fabricating everything. tap on the anvil so I'm hammering. The hardness of the steel of both the anvil and the hammer are such that they have a return energy. And it's a fatigue avoided strategy. Much like dribbling a basketball if you are keeping your hammer in motion you're using less uh, effort to obviously lift the hammer. So if you have a good anvil and a good hammer they will Give return energy that uh, keeps it in motion. That's about a dream sickle orange. That's what you're looking for. <laughs> I'm drawing this piece of roll stock down to a point. should strike the same place as you pull the metal out from underneath of it. And you should draw it uh, with round stock. You should first make it square before you draw it simply because you'll keep your uh, strokes more even and every time you have to roll it then you can more clearly see you're rolling at 90 degrees. Now Rob when you say uh the quality of the anvil and the quality of the hammer uh, influence the amount of energy that you put into the you know, amount of energy return. Uh, what what are those qualities uh, in the anvil and the hammer? So what do you look for specifically? And if you were going to buy an anvil or you're going to buy a hammer, what qualities do you look for? What what uh, composition or how it was made or how, how would you describe that? Best, best quality or the best uh, measure, metric, whatever, of uh, testing an anvil is to simply strike it. And if the ring, pitch of the ring hurts your ears, it's probably a real good one. But you can see the bounce of my hammer. If this were cast iron, it would just thunk. Yeah. So you, you want to avoid the dull thud. But all of my hammers are, uh, they're forged steel. They've been hammered into shape. Uh, 
from seal. Cast iron has a crystalline structure that's loosely formed and I don't know how exactly to describe it except uh, the good basketball analogy. Mm -hmm. uh, poorly inflated ball versus a well inflated one. The tighter the basketball is inflated, of course, the better the bounce. Sometimes I also get asked about uh, charcoal versus coal. Uh, coal has a good deal more carbon packed into it than charcoal, while charcoal does light way more easily and uh, doesn't give off nearly as much smoke or pollution, etc. Uh, ratio of using co sorry, ratio of using coal to charcoal is about 11 to 1. For every 5 gallons of uh, coal that you would use, you would actually use about 55 gallons of charcoal. Because charcoal basically evaporates. Coal, uh, as you heat it, burns off the volatile materials such as sulfur, water, manganese, whatever else might be in it from the form that you uh, turn it first into coke before you actually consume it in the center. So that is some of what you see coming off my coal back here now. Berlin coal. From Berlin, Pennsylvania. Hmm. It's a little more easterly of the Pittsburgh scene. Well, Berlin coal is a much purer product. Uh, and like any job, consistency is everything. Yeah. If you're a carpenter, you want a nail that works every time you grab it out of the box. You want a hammer that hammers right. perfectly. You want a trusted brand name. Now how about uh, bituminous versus anthracite coal? Oh, bituminous is far better. Anthracite is so fickle, I don't even know where to begin. Hmm. This is bituminous. That is bituminous. It's one of the reasons they coke the coal uh, in coke ovens. They take and bake it, essentially. And uh, burn off all the volatiles, get it down to a much more pure fixed carbon state. So you have that consistency, plus you don't have all the other impurities baked into your, made into your steel. So the, the steel does pick up stuff from the from whatever it's heated in? Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. When they originally were making steel, or rather cast iron in the iron furnaces here in Appalachia, and of course we used charcoal. Coal is much more difficult to mine, and trees are much easier to cut down. But as uh, greater quantities of steel were necessary, they needed to find a fixed carbon substitute for charcoal. They could uh, make an abundance, hence we have the coke works at Clareport.